a, a restaurant uh, in downtown Hartford, typically you're looking at a footprint of 3,500 to 4,500 square feet. But, uh, you know, if I've got to negotiate a, a really good deal and give the store away to, to get a tenant, we're, we, we want to do that because that will create a lot of life there. Um, I spent about $100,000 prior to the pandemic uh, demoing some of the old uh, build out that Morton's had put in there. They had blocked all the windows and the skylights. Uh, so it was like a casino in there. You didn't know if it was day or night. You couldn't tell what time it was. And we've opened that up. So you have the, an incredible view of the old state house, the skyline. Uh, you get uh, plenty of natural light in there. I've also exposed a historic brick wall that's similar to what's behind uh, you in, in your office there uh, with historic brick from 50 State Street, which was put in in uh, 1890, which I think would make a fantastic backdrop to a bar or uh, other type of restaurant seating area. So we're real excited that we're going to be able to work a deal here. Well, all sounds good. And the patio is still there, right? Uh, they oh, might... yeah, yeah, the patio, uh, you know, you know, we uh, we kept that open for outside uh, seating area during COVID. I've got, uh, you know, four beautiful picnic tables out there that uh, some of our tenants that were essential uh, would go out there and eat their lunch, uh, you know, during COVID. And, you know, we welcome people out there as well. Well, certainly uh, wish you a lot of a lot of uh, success with all of that. And, and I think, as you may recall, uh, you know, council had a continuing interest in uh, uh, trying to see uh, to what extent uh, more outside seating could be created by uh, uh, for, for folks eating, whether yeah. it's by uh, your food court, uh, uh, people buying food inside and bringing it outside for seating or, or another restaurant that utilized outside tables. So uh, look forward to uh, any efforts that can be made along those lines. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Miguel and um, Mr. Jakubowski. Any other questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. I will. Uh, Councilman Gill. <clears throat> I'm not sure what we act on back at council. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just reading it to try to figure out what would be the appropriate motion. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think it's really just a report back to council so that the full members of the council can see the minutes from this conversation. I don't think there's any action that's required. Okay, thank you. Solves that problem. All right, yes, it does. Uh, Councilman Sanchez? Yes, <clears throat> I thought um, I thought that Councilman Gale had put in the rest of uh, through you chair, I'm sorry. I thought that Councilman Gale had put a resolution requiring a report and don't we vote on that resolution um, as a, uh, I mean, I'm not a, a voting member, but don't we send that to council uh, to be, uh, um, I know, voted that we did receive a report. And yes, so therefore, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Councilman. Yes. I, I believe the motion that Councilman Gale had made was to, by resolution, ask uh, Mr. Jakubowski and other representatives of the company to come and explain um, what was just explained. So I think that the minutes from this meeting should suffice as a report to the full council about um, what the opportunities and expectations and hopes are for the space around Statehouse Square. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Thank you, uh, Attorney Rifkin, and uh, thank you, Council McGill. So uh, a report uh, will be uh, placed um, in the uh, committee, uh, committee meeting minutes uh, regarding this item. All right, uh, moving on, item number two, it is a resolution to appoint uh, Leticia Marulanda and uh, to the Internal Audit Commission as Council's designated appointee. Uh, however, um, and this this item was on the January 11th, uh, 2021's agenda. Uh, however, Council President is not here, and this was uh, her uh, one of her appointments. Uh, so um, I would move that we um, postpone this item. Second. 
Motion has been made and properly second to postpone this item. Any discussions? Councilman LeBron. Yes, through you, uh, Majority Leader, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a question in terms of, are there any timelines associated with the internal audit commissions where we need folks in place? Meaning like, since it's been since January and it's now June, are we missing statutorily anything or as a result of not having um, a full-time person in that seat? Just a question, I'm not sure if it's you or who can answer that. I can answer the question. So sure. per our city charter, a person who serves as a member of a board of commission um, can continue to serve on there until they are reappointed or they are replaced. So at this time, the IAC still has a functioning um, board uh, because even though the terms have expired, they are still there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, all right, any other discussion? Seeing, um, seeing none, all in favor of postponing this item, uh, signify by saying aye. I, the eyes have it. Uh, item is postponed. Um, all right, now moving on. Item number three resolution to reappoint Tetsi as council's appointee to the Internal Audit Commission, uh, which was on January 11th, 2021 agenda. Uh, I do know Mr. C, Mr. C is here, uh, but. Um, and Mr. C, I believe, is still a current member of the commission. Am I am I right? That is correct. Okay. Good to good good to hear from you, uh, Mr. C. All right. Um, oh, there you go. Uh, good to, good to see you. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I, I haven't disappeared. No, oh, no, that's that's okay. Uh, I know that there is still some uh, movement around uh, around this, and I think that what I would like to do, uh, and I know Council President is not here, uh, but what I would like to do is really try to wrap this up at our next uh, Council uh, OMBGA committee meeting uh, so that we can do everything uh, one time. Uh, so, uh, and I know that this has been a uh, painstaking experience for you, but you are still serving <laughs> our city as a, uh, as a commission member, so thank you for that. And please uh, uh, bear with us as we uh, try to uh, around the corner with this. Uh, so I'll let the re record reflect, we'd like to take care, uh, take care of these uh, items at our next uh, meeting. Uh, but at this time, uh, the chair will entertain a motion uh, for uh, postponement. So I'll move uh, Mr. Chair and in doing so, I, I certainly would like to commend Mr. C for his tenacity at, at showing up at every one of these meetings at which he's been on the agenda. And we certainly apologize. <laughs> My motion to postpone will be to postpone apologetically uh, <laughs> for uh, not, not having moved this any further. No problem. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the motion has been made and properly seconded to, to postpone this item until our next committee meeting. Any other discussions on the table, on the floor? Any other discussions? Uh, seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Ayes have it, this item is postponed. Uh, Mr. C, I, I echo Council McGill's sentiments. Uh, I do apologize, but I will look, we will look to get this uh, situated before next month. Very good. I appreciate it. I understand the process. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. Okay. You too. All right. Um, moving on. Item number four, Mayor Bronin with the company resolution authorizing the city of Hartford and the Hartford Police Union to enter into an agreement to address in part the significant disparities in pay between the city of Hartford and others, uh, other city towns throughout Connecticut, which has contributed to retention challenges. Okay. For the Hartford Police Department, which is uh, item number one on the agenda, and we have uh, our CFO. You have the floor, Madam Ms. Hawkins. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Majority Leader Clark and members of the committee and council. Uh, before you, for your consideration, is a resolution authorizing the City of Hartford and the Hartford Police Union to enter into an agreement to address in part the significant disparities in pay between the city of Hartford and other cities and towns throughout Connecticut. Um, 
which has contributed to the retention challenges for the Hartford Police Department. Over the past year, numerous cities and towns have engaged in aggressive recruitment of new officers from the Hartford Police Department, offering substantial increases in pay. It should be noted that recruiting and onboarding new officers is very costly. The current per officer recruiting and onboarding cost is approximately $88,000 per officer for training, gear, etc. As you know, the Hartford Police Department lost dozens of officers over the past year due to resignations and subsequent moves to other departments, the majority of whom were officers of color and officers with fewer than five years on the job. A key factor constantly cited is the is primarily, sorry, the primary factor in the officer's decisions was comparatively low pay for younger officers within the Hartford Police Department and the significantly higher pay that can be obtained elsewhere. The agreement before you would address this by increasing the base pay for newer officers along the parameters of the agreement, which has been agreed to by the leadership of the Hartford Police Union, as well as approved by the MARB. The total cost for this proposal is approximately two and a half million dollars if all officer positions are filled. Due to the assumed attrition from the current vacancies, which are at a higher level than our assumed incoming class members, we assumed a full year attrition savings of about $1.6 million or 21 officers in the 2022 budget. Therefore, the net increase that is included in the fiscal year 2022 budget is approximately a net of $940,000 for this agreement. Um, with that, I am available if you have any questions on the resolution. Thank you, uh, Councilman Sanchez. Hello, hello, Ms. Hockenholm. Mrs. Hockenholm. <laughs> <Could you think? laughs> so now you mentioned that it's eighty-eight thousand dollars as far as hiring and recruiting, but that's not their best base pay. So, no, it, it, so can you give us a a, a a a comp of their base pay starting in a year and a couple of years after? Because I think that's the important piece there. And also, what's what's the comp um, compared to other uh, towns? Uh, because I understand that the benefits also are, are very uh, lucrative in other towns. Uh, for example, Middletown, they still have their 20 years and now. Um, Weathersfield, they start, I believe, at 78,000. Uh, we start, if I'm not mistaken, approximately 50 to 55. If, you know, I'm sure you have the figure, so please, please share with that. Share yes, that. absolutely. Thank you for your question, Councilman Sanchez. Um, so, as of right now, our current start pay is just under $54,000. So you are exactly right. Um, this, uh, this agreement uh, moves that up to $61,000 a year, which allows us um, to be, I believe it's the second or third highest, uh, I'm sorry, not highest, sorry, the second or third lowest, but not the lowest recruiting pay um, to start. And then the max pay on the other end currently is at $72,900 as of right now, but with this new agreement, moves it up to $81,513 at the max annual salary, the base, um, So, which brings us up to about the third or fourth lowest. So it keeps us out of kind of that lower end and moves us up a couple notches. Um, as far as the benefits go, I don't have those. They're not easy to kind of describe, I think, on this call, but you know, as you mentioned, yeah, there, there's a lot of differences between um, Hartford and other municipalities. Does that answer your question? Yes, and through you, Chair, also, is there, uh, through your office, are you able to do a study to find out what is the best, um, or let, uh, let me step back. So are, are you able to do a study to work with um, the union and the chief on um, what's the best route to take to continue the trend of making sure that we keep, have our officers stay with us and not be imposed by these other towns. Oh, yeah. Speak, speaking for myself, um, yes, the, the chief, you know, we're absolutely happy to talk with, work with the chief and um, with the administration to make sure that we're doing, you know, everything that we can to make sure that we're keeping our officers. Thank you for that. Thank you, uh, Councilman Sanchez. Councilwoman Surgeon. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, just want to make sure. So we did in our budget, um, Jen, we did approve 
that $940,000, right? So we yes. did approve that in for the this coming fiscal year budget. Yes, Councilman, we did. That is in the budget. Okay. So, um, so basically all this agreement on the OMB agenda is just ratify, ratifying that information or the agreement with the city, with the police union? It's my understanding, yes, that we're, we're um, a, approving the agreement that's before you, to, but, but the dollars are taken into account in the, in the budget. Okay. That is correct, yeah. Okay, thank you so very much. I do have a question. Um, even though we did pass the budget that had this increase factored into that, uh, when is the, is, are, is the police union in the city close to an agreement or when are they scheduled to meet to ratify the tentative agreement? Or agree upon it. Uh, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Rifkin, but I believe that this was approved by the members of the police union um, a few weeks ago. So I think it's my understanding that this is the last hurdle. But if I'm if I'm incorrect, please someone. Uh... Hearing none. Oh, there's uh, Howard. We, I, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, through uh, Mr. Chair, the. Council has 30 days from the submission of the signed tentative agreement to, uh, to act. If it uh, fails to act on the agreement, then, um, then it automatically uh, is deemed approved. And as I understand it, that last day to act is June 24th. That would be this Thursday. And obviously the council is not uh, scheduled to meet again until a week from today. Right, that answers that question. Thank you, uh, Attorney Ripken. Uh, Councilwoman Surgeon. Um, to you, Mr. Chair, um, to Attorney Rifkin. So if, so basically our next councilman is the 28th. The contract has to be acted on, on the 21st. So what does that do? I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So we'll not have an agreement or will we have an agreement or we, can there be an extension until the 28th? The, this is uh, under a state statute. I, I can't recall the exact section, but it's under you know municipal employees bargaining law. So um, the once a, TA is signed, a tentative agreement is signed. It must be submitted to the legislative body of the town uh, by the 14th day. That was done on uh, May 24th. If the council does not act, either affirmatively or negatively, within 30 days, then it is deemed approved. Ah. So, um, and as, um, as was already uh, noted in voting on the, the budget for fiscal year 21, you've almost virtually approved this item because you have approved the appropriations necessary to support the agreement with the Hartford Police Union. Okay, thank you so very much. So basically, what we're so basically, um, this is just going to a rudimentary exercise because the agreement is already in effect because we did not meet, and so we did even though we did meet and approve the funds in our budget. So it will be it will it will become effective, or deemed approved on uh, Thursday the twenty fourth. Okay. Thank you, sir. Councilman Sanchez. Yes, just a follow-up question um, to Attorney uh, Rifkin. So uh, it will be deemed approved on the 24th. Now, that, so, so we still have to negotiate, um, we, we still have a union negotiation coming up soon for the police union, correct? Um, which is next year. True, this, this was a, agreement, supplementary agreement, if you will, to the current collective bargaining agreement. 
which was funded in on, in the budget and will take effect on July 1st. Correct. So that means that they, we, we still will be in negotiation for a new contract coming up soon. This does not train. This does not change the uh, dates by which we need to start negotiating a new okay. collective bargaining. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions, uh, Councilman Gale? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I, I, I was trying to pull it up as we were talking, but I couldn't find it. It seems to me that we were all sent um, a comparison chart that was done by somebody that compared the starting salaries for Hartford versus a whole bunch of towns and then uh, all sorts of benefits. Do I, I have this right? Everybody remember receiving such a thing? Yes, Councilman Gale. It was in when we did our budget, uh, budget questions. Okay. Uh, maybe that should be sent back around. If somebody can find it, we can send it back around when uh, this thing's coming back to um, uh, coming back to council. Uh, and so the second, um, uh, it's not really a question, I guess. I see that the chief is here. I don't know if the chief was was here to comment on this or or tell us what he's experiencing uh, uh, on this. But I see he's here. Yeah, I'm. I am here. Sorry, I'm on. Um, I'm on the. Uh... The no video uh, cell phone version, but we had our pal, um, our pal uh, golf tournament today to uh, support the police athletic league. So I just wanted to jump on the call in case there were any specific questions. We did send around a comparison. Um, you know, there are places that uh, uh, you know that we can't compare to. Uh, there's places that just plain have more money than us. Uh, Rocky Hill, I think their starting pay is somewhere close to $100,000, $97,000, $98,000. Um, we're just not going to compare to something like that. Our comparisons were uh, New Britain, Stamford, uh, New Haven, uh, you know, other cities. Um, when, you, when you look at uh, police department's ability to recruit and retain officers, we offer a much different work environment um, than some of these other towns. Uh, we also still have a pension. We still have, you know, a, a regular pension. Not a lot of towns have gone to a 401k. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, as you look at how to recruit, um, there's pros and cons. You know, you, you could go to Rocky Hill and you could get, you could make $98,000, but you could never, you could not see a sergeant's test in 20 years. You know, here we run them about every two. So, um, you know, I think, you know, as, as, uh, as the CFO mentioned, um, you know, this is one step in trying to make this a, uh, a place people want to come to work. Uh, you know, just last week I changed our, uh, I changed our ordering process because, you know, our ordering pro process was archaic and we were ordering in the same, you know, bottom five to 10% of the department based on seniority uh, every week. Now we're going to go through the entire list. And, and so these are all things that we're drawing out of the cultural analysis. We're drawing out of the working group that was that was put together as a result of the cultural analysis, and you know we are trying to um, we're trying to be competitive. But you know, again, you know, I've played in I've played in this this golf tournament today with the same uh, the same group of, of of people that I have for probably the last ten years, and it's the chief of Bloomfield, the chief of Cheshire, um, you know. And as I as we sat around the the the, the dinner table today you know, everyone's seeing the same thing, you know, people are leaving Cheshire to go to Middletown because as was mentioned, you know, Middletown's 20 years still, uh, Cheshire doesn't have a pension, you know, people are leaving, leaving Bloomfield for one reason or another. It's just been a very transient population as far as new officers go. Some of it's the millennial, um, you know, some of the millennial uh, tags that we've, that we talk about and, and how these generations work differently. But, you know, I still think that we have to work as a city, um, you know, to repair some of those things. And, and pay was the biggest issue. Um, uh, the second biggest issue is work-life balance and scheduling, and we're working on those. Um, you know, but but we also have, you know, a union contract that we've got to, you know, that we've got to work through. And uh, to answer your question, bargaining for that opens up in January, um, you know, this coming January. And, and our, our uh, current collective bargaining agreement expires on, on June 30th of, of 2020. Uh, 2022. So, um, you know, I think this is a step in the right direction, but there's more work to be done. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any uh, questions uh, for the Chief on his clarifications, explanation? 
Seeing none, okay. Uh, the chair entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to favorably send this back to council um, for approval. Second. Motion has been made and seconded uh, for a favorable recommendation. Uh, transmitted back to the city council at the next council meeting. Any discussion? Any discussion? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I, I, just to point out that while it will be on the next council meeting, assume they're, assuming there's a favorable report, it will uh, at that point be moot. Um, so uh, perhaps when it comes up, uh, as majority leader, you might just note that the uh, agreement became effective on the 24th, and therefore the item does not have to be taken up. Duly noted. Thank you, Attorney Rifkin. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, discussions, comments? Uh, seeing none, all in favor on this item uh, being passed. I, <laughs> it's ceremonial. <laughs> it exactly. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> better, it's better than the alternative. Yes, it is. Uh, the eyes have it. All right, moving on. Uh, item number five, Mayor Brunner with the company resolution authorizing the annual submission of the list of community programs eligible for the 2021 Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act NAA tax credit program to the Connecticut Department of Revenue Services, DRS, which is item number two on this past agenda. For the hearing date to be noted for the public of, which had a hearing date of June 10th. Okay, and I do know that our grants department is here. All right, there he is. Uh, Evan, you have the floor. Good evening, thank you, Majority Leader, and hello to the rest of the council and committee. Uh, we're here with the request for consideration and favorable recommendation to the council of the resolution authorizing the city to submit the list of community programs eligible for the 2021 Connecticut Neighborhood Tax Assist, uh, sorry, <laughs> 2021 Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act NAA tax credit program. Um, as you know from our public hearing on June 10th, the NAA is a Connecticut DRS program intended to incentivize contributions by businesses to nonprofit organizations. Participating municipalities are required by state law to manage and oversee the local process. Uh, Central Grants, uh, Ronnie Vasquez, who's on the call here, acts as a liaison between the state and the community on submitting this list. And uh, just as clarification for anyone else on the call or anyone who wasn't at the public uh, hearing we had last week, um, this is not a grant program. Uh, nonprofits on this list are authorized and encouraged to work with businesses to solicit donations and contributions uh, in support of their projects. Um, their contributions can total no more than $150,000. That contribution made by the business is then eligible for a tax credit uh, granted from the state. So it's really trying to foster a partnership between private businesses who want to make donations and support the community and nonprofits who have different types of projects who they, you know, they want to kind of market and get done and want to solicit donations for those programs. Uh, I won't rehash the whole presentation, but I'm here to answer questions and uh, thank you for your time. Any questions for Evan? Also to want to uh, announce uh, the uh, incoming of um, Councilwoman Ramirez, who was also a a member of the on the day committee. Councilwoman Surgeon. Uh, no question, Mr. Chair, but just want to uh, thank the grant department, uh, Mr. Johnson and his staff. Um, one of the things which was greatly appreciated in at our public hearing, his, his um, PowerPoint presentation. And in those presentation, um, we were, well, I was, I believe I was um, educated on how the uh, the program works, and that was really important uh, to point out to the community how the NAA program works, um, fostering the relationship between businesses and the nonprofit. I think um, we all and the people on at the public hearing 
has really learned a lot and how to go about uh, actually basically using this program to their benefits a lot more now. So I just wanna thank Mr. Johnson and his staff for all that knowledge that was departed on us. Thank you, Councilwoman, for your comments. Any questions for Mr. Johnson, Councilman Gale? No question for Mr. Uh, uh, Johnson. Uh, I've just uh, second what Councilwoman Surgeon uh, has said and uh, note that uh, uh, having worked with uh, several of the nonprofits that are on uh, the list, um, I've seen I've seen this program become be effective. Um, I, I know when I first uh, saw this program as a council member, I questioned the degree to which any any of these various nonprofits actually received any money. But I think Mr. Johnson gave us some statistics that, that somewhere north of seven hundred thousand dollars was received by uh, various Hartford nonprofits um, uh, through this the tax credit. Um, uh, swap, if you will. Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a, it, for the, for the, for those outfits that are able to make use of it, it um, it's a pretty good, a pretty good program. So with that said, I'd be happy to move uh, to send it back to council with a favorable recommendation. Uh, second. Motion has been made by Councilman Gale, second by Councilwoman Surgeant uh, for a phase of favorable recommendation back to council. Any discussions on this item? Any discussions? Say none. All in favor, say aye. 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 It's unanimous. The ayes have it. Uh, this item uh, will be passed favorably next to the to the next council meeting. All right. Uh, moving on, item number six, which is a substitute resolution by Mayor Bronin with accompanying resolution uh, with accompanying resolution approving the HUD annual action plan. For the program year 7 1 2021 6 30 22 the annual plan outlines the city's intended use in year two of approximately uh what is now evan the substituted amount the amount the same um okay the change in the substitution was there was a page break and one of the projects was cut out of the resolution so it's still 6.7 million in entitlement funds for activities funded through the CDBG, ESG, Papua and Home Program. Uh, and uh, all members of the uh, of the committee were sent uh, the updated, uh, the substitute resolution, which is before us now. Everyone wanna just walk us through again, uh, this right quick. I know we just had a public hearing about this. Oh, look like his uh, screen is frozen. Can you hear me? I hear you. We hear okay. you. I, yeah, it's not moving, but if you can hear me, I can talk. And maybe it'll catch. You can talk. It looks frozen, yeah. I think he completely froze now. Okay, well, um, we can move on. We just <laughs> did have a meeting about a uh, public hearing about this on June seventeenth, and uh, if I understand it correctly, um, this is Hawking Hall. We have to vote on this uh, before June thirtieth. Am I correct? That is my understanding. Okay, uh, so any dis. Uh, he came off. Uh, any discussions about? The, oh, there he is. <laughs> You're on mute. There you go. Sorry, I've, I came to Ronnie's desk since my computer decided to freeze on me. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, yeah. You can just give a brief overview overview for the public uh, regarding uh, CDBG. Right. So the CDBG process and program is basically an annual allocation that the City of Harper receives from HUD. Uh, each year, HUD does a formula allocation based on our population and different statistics, and the city is authorized to then grant out money through four grant programs, uh, CDBG, ESG, HOPWA, and HOME. Uh, what we have before you is a list of proposed activities. Those activities were uh, put together and solicited from the public as part of our uh, public notification process earlier in the spring. And basically they represent a various uh, list of community activities and projects 
uh, to support youth activities, after school activities, economic development, housing, uh, support for people experiencing homelessness, uh, people living with AIDS, a very kind of diverse list of projects that are there before you. Uh, what you have is the mayor's recommendations. Uh, each year, the mayor makes his recommendations to council. Council then has the opportunity to talk to grants, to talk to each other, and to hear from the public like was done at last week's public hearing, and then make your own recommendations and your own considerations. Uh, we then take that adopted resolution and that kind of guides our program funding for the year. Uh, I'll stop there, uh, just pause for any questions. Any questions uh, for uh, Evan? No, sir. All right. Um, seeing not, uh, Councilor Miguel, you have one? Okay, go right ahead. Well, I, I'm trying to do some of the math on this. Um, uh, and it's running into a little problem. This is very, very minor, but I think you've got a okay. transposition of uh, figures. Um, on the, uh, the CDBG where it's 3.984. Uh, I think if you add it, it's really 3.948. I think the eight and four got, got transposed. Okay, yeah. Um, and then um, is, it, is it the case that, that uh, this other eligible activities, non-public service, Did they, re does that really add up to 2.6 million there? That's based on our allocations and calculations and spreadsheets. Yes, it should add up to 2.6. I mean, I don't have, not at my desk, I'm at a colleague's desk, so I can't double check the math quickly for you, but it should, it should add up. And if not, we would correct it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council McGill. Any other questions for Director Johnson? Councilwoman uh, Bumidas. Thank you for you. Uh, thank you, Director Johnson, um, for that information and your presentation. In the past, um, we, we've, well, before, in the before times, we were able to uh, get um, just general information uh, as to the process of CDBG and, and understanding, recognizing that there's a committee that meets and reviews the applications and there is a thorough process. And so I was just curious in terms of, given that we're, you know, we're phasing out of COVID, but we were definitely in COVID when um, submissions were requested, how that process went for you all. And if it was um, smooth and just, I was just curious. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we talked about this uh, a little bit uh, at the committee, and, and, I'll, and I'll just tell you what I, what I said to the committee as well. Uh, we went into this process at the height of the kind of second or third phase of the pandemic. So, you know, right at that time of January and February, when everyone was still a little bit nervous to uh, gather and be in person. So one thing that I wanted to do quickly was to allow people to submit their applications as PDFs, uh, you know, online. We still were able to take them here in person if people wanted to submit them. Uh, but that was one quick thing that we knew we could offer back to organizations and people appreciate it. So that was really, uh, really a good step we were able to take on and hopefully it's something we can replicate next year. Uh, another thing that came up, I think, was you know, we did have organizations where people got back to us in very plain terms and said, I want to apply, I need to apply, but I have COVID or somebody in my family has recently passed away from COVID. And in those cases, we worked uh, really closely with them to try to make sure we could still adhere to our process and keep the integrity of that in place, but also recognize this is a year that nobody's ever experienced anything like this before. Um, so we had to try to be flexible, but also still try to maintain uh, some sense of the order of the normal process. And then we also tried to ask people, uh, tell us how you've done this year. You know, how have you adapted to the challenges of this, you know, the pandemic? 
did you innovate any way? Did you come across any hurdles that you couldn't overcome? And we heard some good stories of people just being resilient and thoughtful. So we took that into consideration when we took the application to our panels. Uh, so I'll stop Excellent. there. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions, but if there's not, I'd like to make a favorable recommendation back to council. This has been made uh, by Councilwoman, uh, Councilwoman Bumidas as a favorable recommendation. Is there a second? Aye. Two. Uh, there was a second by Councilwoman Surgeon. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, on the favor, say aye. 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 It's unanimous. The ayes have it. Uh, this item is passed as the favorable recommendation back to council. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving forward, item number seven, Mayor Broner with the company resolution authorizing the city to enter into a contractual agreement with Parkville Senior Center for the operation of the Parkville Senior Center and Catholic Charities for the operation of the Hispanic Senior Center. And I believe uh, we have Director Arroyo who was here. Nicole yes. How are you doing? Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, this is just uh, the resolution to allow us to continue our work with the Parkville uh, Senior Center and with the Hispanic Senior Center, which is run through a uh, contract with, by Catholic Charities. Um, we budget for them every year in our budget, which you all approve. And uh, this year you were uh, kind enough to provide them with an increase, which uh, we are grateful for and they are grateful for as well. But generally um, it allows us to enter into the contract to pay for the senior center director or a portion of his or her salary, um, as well as other services within the senior center, um, including activities such as Tai Chi, computers, um, uh, yoga and things of that sort, but uh, it's a pretty straightforward resolution in terms of what we're asking for. Thank you for that. Any uh, questions from my colleagues? Seeing none. The Let's chair make a motion for yes, a favorable recommendation to council. Which has been made with, as the favorable recommendation by Councilwoman Bermudez. Is there a second? Second. Second has been made by Councilwoman Surgeon. Any discussion? Councilman Gale. Just quickly, I, uh, I, what's the deal with the, with the other senior centers? Do we own some of the some of that property or do we also enter into, into a contract with every other senior uh, center at some point? So the city a number of years ago prior to me coming on board um, basically created what are referred to by my staff who's been here um, when that all happened as two super senior centers the North End Senior Center and the South End Senior Center. And those are considered city run senior centers. They're run by contract that goes through a procurement process. Um, we went through procurement uh, last fiscal year and those contracts were um, bid on um, and the uh, Blue Hills Civic BHCA was approved to run, to continue their operation of the North End Senior Center. And Catholic Charities also put in their bid um, or answered the, the RFP for the procurement through the procurement process to continue running the South End Senior Center. So those two senior centers get a significantly larger portion of our general fund allocated budget because they are considered the seniors, uh, the, the city's senior centers. Um, the Hispanic Senior Center and um, Parkville Senior Center, Parkville itself is its own separate 501c3 that we support through this through this funding. Um, it allows them to do the work. They are also uh, at the Parkville Community School, so they are in city property, but they are their own 501c3 that does other fundraising for other activities through their senior center. And then the Hispanic Senior Center is actually um, uh, associates, it's a, it's a project, a, a group from the Catholic Charities that they have. And so they request funding and we've been funding them, um, I believe for at least a decade, if not more, uh, for at least from what I've been told from my staff since I've been here the last three and a half years, Councilman. Thank you for the clarification. No problem. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 I have it as unanimous. Uh, this item is passed. 
Thank you, Director Arroyo. Thank you. All right, moving along, just time check is 634. We have a public hearing uh, at seven and we have uh, one, one, two, three, four, five more items. All right, so let's see how quickly we can get through these. Uh, Next item is Mayor Brunner with the company resolution authorizing the city of Hartford to enter to a 10 year tax abatement agreement with Zion Park MF2 LLC to support affordable rental housing located at 602 608 Zion Street, 833, 841, 851, and 863 Park Street, Hartford, Connecticut, known as Zion Park Apartments. And uh, we have uh, Greg Jones and Tom Nelson here. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, today, we'd like to put forth for your consideration a favorable recommendation, a resolution uh, a request that you favorably approve and recommend the a resolution for a 10-year tax abatement agreement to begin in July of 2022 for the property or the owner just mentioned, which is Zion Park Apartments, I'm sorry, Zion Park MF2 LLC. For those buildings in questions, which were uh, the chairman just mentioned, uh, Zion Park is a 46 unit complex of affordable housing dis dispersed among six properties. Uh, four of those properties are actual buildings that house units or and or commercial space. The other two of those properties are uh, parking lots, so it, they're improved as well, but they serve a need to the property. Uh, the property had an abatement or has an abatement, yeah, had, had an abatement that was uh, for 40 years, a four-year abatement. This abatement is, is, uh, is scheduled to terminate in 2022. Uh, the new owner has requested uh, an abatement of taxes to begin in 2022, thereby terminating the existing and the current agreement. Uh, so we have the one-year elapse and the abatement agreement would uh, be effective for a 10-year period after 2022, uh, starting in July of 2022. Also, I, I like to have uh, Greg Jones, who was present, who present, prepared a, a, a PowerPoint. I'm not sure if you guys had received that by email or not. Um, I'd like to give him an opportunity to share his thoughts. And if you, and if I may, before I introduce Mr. Jones, I'd like to go over the resolution uh, just for the viewing audience, listening audience. What we're asking is that the uh, committee recommend the tenure abatement. Uh, it should apply to the taxes beginning in July, July 1st, 2022 through January first of 2032. The owner will pay the taxes as follows, which is 40% for the first two years and 60% for the uh, year three through 10. Of course, all the units will remain affordable as prescribed by the HUD use agreement and the current restrictive covenant, which is uh, enforced by the state as a result of one of the previous owners borrowing money from the state to originally rehab the property. The owner also invest $800,886,224 in capital improvements and repairs. During the construction period, uh, all of the capital improvements of the capital improvements and repairs the owner should comply with the HAP agreement with the the HAP ordinance, which requires the owner to set aside set aside fifteen percent of the uh, project work hours and fifteen percent of the cost and thirty percent of the project work hours be done by Hartford residents. And the other thing that's worth pointing out here is that the property is sold within the first five years. The owner shall pay the greater of 10% or all of the unabated abated taxes. The agreement should be non-assignable, non-transferable without permission, uh, uh, consent of the city. And 
if for any reason the owner should default, that the agreement with the financing company, the, the agreement would automatically transfer to the, the bank or whomever is the financier uh, to their benefit. And again, we introduced this with to the uh, during the last tax abatement that we requested um, that if the applicant fails to sign the agreement 90 days after uh, the city for its, its final uh, draft that the agreement possibly be rescinded. Uh, with that said, I'd like to introduce Greg Jones I'm not sure if he's here. I know he he, he had said at times he was having trouble with his wife by an internet. So he mm -hmm. may be heading out. Greg. Uh, Tone, thank you. I'm here. If I break up, I apologize. We are having some uh, pretty heavy storms right now. So I apologize. Uh, 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 Mayor, Majority Leader Clark and uh, uh, members of the city council, thank you for your time. I'll be quick since uh, you've got a, a deadline at seven, a stop time at seven o'clock. Some of y'all may know me. I think I've, I've uh, appeared uh, before most of y'all before. Uh, a little bit different ownership structure uh, for Zion Park. We are a social impact fund and our mission is absolute. We want to do good things for people, period. And, uh, and you know, that is absolutely a collaboration, especially uh, in a city like Hartford. For affordable product, you need to collaborate with the local community and government uh, to, so we can do the things that, uh, that these residents don't oftentimes have opportunities to do. Um, we are, Tone mentioned, a little over 800,000 in rehab. We're actually, uh, we closed on February 26th. Uh, so we've owned the property for just about four months and uh, the budget has gone up. Uh, there, were, there, was, there were some structural issues that we were not aware of when we bought the property that we are addressing uh, in addition to that, the, the crime in that direct market is worse than we expected. And we're doing some um, additional security improvements, uh, which include better fencing and better doors uh, and more cameras than we expected. So um, I, I, if there are any questions, I mean, we are, we are doing exterior work. Uh, one of the cool things that we are, are doing is... Um, uh, we're reviving. There's a really cool Coca-Cola mural on the side of our building. Uh, it's historic for sure. It's been there a long time and we're going to bring that back. Uh, we're going to do um, interior units where there's a lot of deferred maintenance and we're going to do a lot of improvements to the retail space. Uh, uh, the uh, Cuban sandwich shop has been there a long time. They need some love and attention in their, uh, in their space, along with some of the other uh, residents uh, or, or commercial uh, tenants. We are with the, with the rehab that we're doing and with the partnership with the city on the pilot, we're also gonna bring amenities to the residents, which will include things that these residents, opportunities for the residents. We're gonna bring a service coordinator and that service coordinator will help work with the residents for health screening, resume building and things like that in our space, one of the retail spots that we have is going to convert for the uh, for the actual management office, and we're going to build you know a lounge area and a business center to go with that space. So the service coordinator and the on-site staff have a place to really help these residents be productive and and participate better within the community. So in in short, you know the you know we are improving the Frog Hollow community. We are really trying to, to improve one of the, the weaker spots of that small community. And uh, the biggest thing is uh, the gang and drug bio, uh, issues that are there. So um, we're going to do a lot of exterior security work, um, interior deferred maintenance, new roofs, and some other things. And as Tone said, we are, you know, I, every, so far everyone that we're using is local to Hartford, roofers, contractors, all minority um, minority local Hartford people. So, um, so we're giving back in that way too by, by using the resources that Hartford can offer us. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Tom. 
if there are any questions that we can possibly assist and answer, uh, also, please answer. Um, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, I believe this item is on the. Um, so I would recommend or put a motion to for to postpone this until after the public hearing. All right, there was some interference. Uh, this item is on the uh, public hearing agenda, which is coming up in 15 minutes. Uh, so the motion has been placed on the floor to, to postpone this item until after the public hearing has been uh, conducted. Is there a second? Councilman Gale. Before I second it, since I'm not sure whether a motion to postpone is debatable, I would like to ask a question uh, of the, um, uh, uh, the presenters uh great question thank you i i'm i'm intrigued by the coca-cola sign and um uh because coke's a, they're a major corporation so my question is are, are they going to be paying you advertising revenue um uh, no no so if they're not let, let me just ask you would you consider spending the same money on some other mural i mean i i appreciate that there's some historic value but i just don't see why we should be spending money to promote Coke if they're not going to if they're not going to uh, help you out with with something. Would you? Yeah, no. I, to be uh, to be clear, Council Miguel, there is no economic benefit to doing this uh, with the Coca Cola mural. Uh, in other in other towns and cities that we've been in, we have collaborated, for example, with local um, colleges where their art department will participate in a competition and the winner of the competition, for example, paints the mural on the building and they change that annually. So, you know, it, it, it's, that would be a matter of where this is located. It's very high. Um, it would be a safety thing. If that's okay and that can pass, we would absolutely entertain working with, you know, you know, a group in Hartford to do something that is more Hartford or direct community uh, we have absolutely no problem putting a mural that might be more, you know, harmonious with this direct community. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, uh, there's still, uh, there's a motion on the floor. Has that been seconded yet? Um, Councilwoman Bermudez. Thank you. Since there's a motion, I'll be very brief, but I do want to second what Councilman Gale mentioned about the mural. Um, while perhaps in previous times there was, may have been no nostalgia towards Coca-Cola. We are in different times now. And I definitely agree that uh, mural should be more reflective of the community and it's times. So thank you for bringing that up. And that's all I have to mention. And I'll second Councilwoman Surgeon's motion. All right, uh, motion has been made and, and has been properly second. Uh, any discussion, say none, all in favor on postponement, say aye. 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 Unanimous eyes have it. This item is postponed uh, and it will be back on the agenda for next month uh, for a for a vote. Thank you, Greg. Uh, thank you, Tone. Appreciate your presentation. You. Don't go too far because you got to, uh, I guess, present <laughs> in public area. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on. All right. The next items here, uh, there's actually um one two three three items and i'll just read them again on the under uh, other business uh mayor Brony with the company resolution that would place additional funding that should be included in the state budget that is ultimately adopted by the general assembly signed by the governor into the city's capital improvement plan budget for investments in city infrastructure including but not limited to parks, traffic calming streets and sidewalks and public radio, public safety radio infrastructure. Uh, the additional item, uh, which was four on the on that agenda is Mayor Brony with the company resolution that will authorize the city to utilize 5 million, which had been set aside and committed fund balance addressing economic uncertainty and capital and the capital region to sorry to the capital region development authority for the purposes of providing loans that will allow us to return city owned property back to the tax rolls. And the last item, which was item number 25 on that agenda, Mayor Brony with the company resolution that would allow us to move 
forward with the remediating city-owned blighted property, including but not limited to 270 Albany Avenue and adjoining retail properties. These properties were recently acquired by the city through a tax deed sale. Given the time restrictions uh, that we have, and these all three, all of these three items are factored into the budget that we passed. Uh, so there is a time sensitivity for this. Uh, so this will not be able, unfortunately, uh, my recommendation not to, not to postpone this. Uh, I uh, will be happy to entertain a motion to move these along uh, with no recommendation from this committee so that uh, we can debate this on the floor if there are any questions that, that cannot be asked from this time uh, until leading up to our council meeting by the department heads. Of these so people. move. Uh, Councilwoman Surgeon, I think you wanted to second it, but your phone was muted. Yes, sir. Second. Uh, motion has been uh, made and properly second to send this to council with no recommendation, uh, pending discussion, uh, if need be, by council members with uh, department heads. Uh, any discussion on this? Say none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Uh, these items are postponed. Uh, sorry, they're not postponed. Don't. <laughs> they are will they will be sent back to the council with no recommendation uh for debate at our next council meeting on the 28th okay any other business seeing none um this ombga committee meeting is now uh, adjourned thank you very much uh, for those that that are uh, viewing our viewing audience don't go too far we have a public hearing at six uh, sorry at seven o'clock uh that's going to be chaired by councilwoman surgeon Thank you very much. Uh, have a good night. Please continue to stay safe and stay healthy. Take care. Good night. Good night.